Hello everyone, welcome to our tutorial number 7 on how to set up Lime Survey at McGill. This is Biru from CRCF McGill. In our previous tutorials, we talked about how to set up survey properties, different question types including list radio, array, multiple choice, and text answer questions in Lime Survey version 2. In this video, we will talk about how to send survey links to participants and how to export data for data analysis. Basically, there are two ways to send survey links to your participants. The first one is very easy. All you need to do is go to your home survey page right here, clicking the button here, home page, for your current survey. And then you scroll all the way down to survey summary, to survey summary right here. Under survey summary, you'll find your survey URL here. So here, this is your link. For your survey. All you need to do is basically copy and paste this link and send it to your uh, participants by email or post this link uh, on your website if you have um, a website for your project. So participants can access your survey through this URL link right here. And the second way to send survey links to participants is to create a participant table in Lime Survey by clicking Survey Participant right here. You can use this feature in Lime Survey if you already have uh, a list of participants' emails available to you. And there are very detailed step by step instructions here in McGill IT's Lime Survey User Guide to Creating Surveys. I believe it is on page 39 right here. Uh, they have very detailed instructions on how to add participants and in initialize participant tables so that you can send invitation emails directly from Lime Survey to all your participants. So because they already detail it step by step here in this user guide from McGill IT, I will not repeat this uh, in our video today, but you can certainly take a look at it and try to do it if you already have a list of participants' email that, uh, that is available to you. So once you finish entering all your questions in your survey, you can preview the entire survey by using this button right here on the top. So I'm going to click on it. And here, from here, you can start going through your entire survey step by step as if you were a participant. So you can check whether all the conditions are correct, whether they are supposed to appear where, uh, where they are intended to, and whether the display is, uh, is nice and easy to use and things like that. So you can preview your survey before actually launching it. Once you are happy with your survey and you think it's ready to be launched in order to launch the survey basically you just need to uh, activate your survey by clicking this link right here on the left so i'm just going to click on it and of course there will be warnings and you need to read it very carefully before finalizing and confirming your action to activate your survey the reason for that is once your survey is activated there are many functions, settings, and conditions will not be able to change while uh, during your data collection. So uh, I would recommend you to go through the list very carefully to make sure that the settings are to your liking. Once you are happy with your settings and your current state of the survey, you can click Save and Activate the survey right here at the bottom. And there we go. So that's how you activate your survey. Once you finish data collection, you can start exporting your data for later data analysis. So this is uh, how you can do it. You can go to responses here on the top right hand side and click on it. And select the first option, responses and statistics. I'm going to click on it and it will bring you to this page right here and then you click export. Today I will show you two ways to export your data. The first one is exporting data into CSV format and then the second one will be export your data to SPSS. So let's begin with exporting your results to CSV. So you need to go to export, export results 
to application, the first option here, which will bring you to this page, exports results. So the format would like to be CSV. The reason for exporting your data to CSV instead of Microsoft Excel is that CSV is compatible with most of the statistical uh, software that we use uh, in social sciences. Uh, which is a little bit more stable than Microsoft Excel and CSV can be read into many other open sources um, uh, software as well, for example, Open Office. So that's why I always prefer CSV over Microsoft Excel. So, okay, so our export format will be CSV and we scroll down to general and I would like to export all responses most of the time. So I'm just gonna let leave it as default all responses here and by now i'm hoping that you already have a user friendly code book so all you need to do just basically export the question code basically the variable names in sbss language uh, to csv file instead of exporting the entire question um, so that's for the headings so i i would prefer to use a question code and then leave everything as it is. And then go to answer codes as responses. So that means if participant answer yes, I will see one in my, uh, in my exported CSV file. However, if you don't have a code book by now and you prefer working with uh, text, you can certainly um, export question code and question text and then use full answer as your responses in your um, CSV file, okay? And of course, make sure that uh, everything is selected here on the right-hand side, and usually it's selected for you automatically, so you don't need to change anything. And then you need to go to the top right-hand side here and click export so that your data will be exported to CSV. So let's try that, let's click export save file okay and now let's go check whether the file has been saved correctly and voila there you go has been um, has been saved and exported as csv file i'm opening it in microsoft excel let's uh, check what this file looks like so you will see on the top, the first row here, it contains all your variable names, which is the question codes that I asked for. And everything has been exported, I believe. And we have um, the re different responses in this file. And instead of, instead of text, answer text, I asked for uh, the numbers, the, an the answer codes as responses in, in my um, data file. So this is what it is. So this is how you can export your data, export your results to CSV file. And the second way of exporting results is to export your data directly to SPSS. And the perks of exporting your data directly to SPSS are um, once your data have been exported uh, in your SPSS file, all the values, all your variable names, labels, and values for your responses will be automatically entered inside the SPSS file. So it will save you a lot of time, a lot of trouble, and will avoid many mistakes because you don't need to recode or re-edit um, all your values in your SPSS data file. So it's very, very convenient. I highly recommend it this way if you are working with SPSS. So this is how we can uh, export our data to SPSS. We'll go to responses once again, click responses. The first option, responses and statistics. And we'll go to export. Second option this time, exports results to a SPSS command file. I'm gonna click on it. It will bring us to this um, interface here, export response data to SPSS. So usually we would like to export all responses and for SPSS version, most of us currently are working with um, SPSS 16 or up. 
And if you are at McGill in 2018, you should be probably working with uh, SPSS 23 or 24. Okay, so you need to scroll down, go to step one and click export SimTech file. I'm gonna export it, save file, click OK. And then you go to step two, export your data file, click on it, save, say OK. So now basically you downloaded two files. The first one is your SimTech file. The second one is your data file for your results. So now we need to minimize our windows here and go to where your file has been downloaded. So in my case, I have downloaded both files, actually all three files uh, into my download folder. So this is my SimTex file and this is my data file that I just downloaded. Um, the next thing you need to do basically is double click on your SimTex file. If you already have SPSS installed in your computer, you just need to double click your SimTex file and open your SimTex file in SPSS. So once your SimTex file has been opened in SPSS, you need to make one single change in this SimTex. That is basically to change the path for your file to tell SPSS where to locate uh, your data file. So which will be on line eight, file equals, then your survey name, you need to put the full path of where your file is, where your data file is. So this is how you need to do it. You go back to the folder where, where it contains your data file and you click on the little box up here, which will show you the full path of this location in Windows. And basically you need to copy this path and then paste it right before the name of your data file. Copy and paste it here and then type a backslash. So then it will show that this is the location where your data file is currently and if you are working with a Mac instead of a, a backslash uh, you need to use the forward slash however because I'm in Windows so um, I just need to copy and paste the path and then I type a backslash right here before my file name and then that's it you don't change anything else in this syntax now you just need to select all and then run So now if I go back to my data file in SPSS, you will see in data view, you will see I have three responses like in my CSV file and everything has been entered. Hopefully entered correctly. I believe so. Let's go back. Good. So our last question is about US cars and this is uh, what it is. And if we go to variable view, you will see all the labels have been already entered and our variable names have been entered as well. And they are the uh, basically question code names uh, in Lime survey. And if you are using list radio, you can see here the values have been entered according, uh, have been entered as well for uh, each and every answer options so you don't need to do anything which is very convenient and also that's why I recommend to use uh, this function in Lime Survey directly exporting your results to SPSS. So of course you need to save your data file so you can do data analysis after. One thing to keep in mind while you are exporting your data from Lime Survey is that you should export your data before stopping the survey. Because when you deactivate, stop your survey by deactivating it, all your responses will be deleted from Lime Survey. So uh, that's not what we want. So I will highly recommend to export your data first, export your data first, and then close your survey, deactivate your survey after you have safely exported all your data. 
Okay, so this concludes our seven tutorials on how to set up Lime Survey and McGill for CRCF members. Lime Survey is a very versatile online survey tool. From now on, I will periodically make videos on how to use more complicated and advanced features in Lime Survey. And our next video will be on how to set up placeholders for questions. If you have specific requests and want to know how to set up a very specific type of questions, which is not included in our previous videos, please don't hesitate to contact me at biru.jo at Thank you very much for watching.